G'day everyone, welcome to another Tools and Stuff review and this one is kind of special because today I'm going to show you an impact driver you may not have seen before and it is in fact the smallest impact driver in the world. Now by smallest I mean shortest from back to front of chuck. This is the shortest impact driver in the world and you've probably never seen one before. It's been out for quite a while. Now DeWalt users right now are furiously typing. They're going apoplectic in the comment section. But settle down guys, just wait a minute and I'm gonna show you an impact driver that is shorter, at least on the top bit, than the DCF850. And because this is special and it's an exotic tool that I've had to import from another country, I thought we'd do something special for this tool too. So, tools and stuff road trip time. As you know with these intros, I love to show you exotic places around New Zealand. This one, um... Yeah... Not so much. This is the Easy One PD1, that's E for Ecorexinatosaurus, Z for Zuching Tyrannus, 1 as in half of 2, P for Pterosaurus, D as in Dromyceomimus, and 1 again as in the other half of the 2 that we mentioned earlier. Now I've got my special location, I've got some orange juice to help get me through this, in fact I better get into that. Need to stay hydrated, it's a stinking hot day here today. That's better, keep the hydration up. Always important when you're working out in the sun. Speaking of sun, this might be a little bit hard to see because the sun is not playing the right angle for me to show you this impact driver. Shall we change location slightly? Well, is that a good idea? Now, as I said in the intro, this tool has been out for a few years now, but only, as far as I can tell, in one particular country. And you know what country that is? Yes, that's right, it is Japan. And it's so frustrating when they don't release really cool tools like this because as well as being the shortest impact driver around, yes, definitely shorter than the DeWalt, it also does other special things that the DeWalt one most definitely does not. Being from Japan though, of course, it has a chuck. Oh, I better not fire that into my beer. The bits that it takes are a bit longer than the bits you probably have. But when you do put them into the chuck, it is a single one-hand approach and then you pull it to get it back out like most Japanese impact drivers well apart from all the Hikoki ones of course now if the sun is not washing this out too much and silhouetting things <laughs> then you will be able to see that this is a black and red impact driver as well as black and red you can get yellow and black and just all murdered out black and it looks much better on this angle here so we can actually get the sun coming from the right direction but the view in the background not quite as good pretty good but not quite as good this location is totally mint and I can't believe I've never been here before but it is shit hot New Zealand has some awesome spots anyway back to the tool now even though this is very short in the top here it is not very short at the base it's pretty bulky at the bottom this is an 18 volt 5 amp hour battery as you can see so it's pretty chunky row of 5 cells there another row of 5 cells there makes a fairly big battery but this is not just an 18 volt tool this is a 14.4 volt and 18 volt tool so if you have a low amp power low capacity 14.4 volt battery with only four cells of course because you only you need five to make 18 double them up to get more amp hours with a 14.4 volt you only need the four cells so battery with four cells you're looking at only sort of that size by half the height of this thing that's a lot more compact although the base is quite long the way these clip on too but different you don't slide it on from the end like you do with most slide on tool batteries you put it on there and then just done just a tiny little slide got a couple of arrows there to line that up if you're a bit special um, but yeah so that's different and it has two sets of clips on the battery there to line everything up unlike the sort of slide rails you'd normally have You've got that drop in there and that helps protect this area here it's got a communication section there like you would have on a Makita 18 volt the yellow bit um, so this has got a little black bit there it does the same sort of thing but it's more protected you can't knock it quite as easily as you can on the Makita 
pretty easy. Now I don't know if you noticed when I had that battery off and I had the impact driver laying down, we've got a couple of interesting bits here. What is going on here? Well, take your driver bit out of the front here. You can now bung it in the base like so. Put your battery on. That's now stuck in there. You cannot get that out. Now that might be kind of annoying for some people, but it's a secure way to keep your bits that you're not using without having any other type of bit storage. Of course you have to take it off to get it back out again, but the bit where the detent ball normally goes, there's a little cutout for it there so that you can't pull these back out. You stick it in sort of like that, cheat it a bit, then in theory you can pull them out, but they might end up falling out too. So. Now this tool is part of the Exena range, I don't know if that's how you say it, Exena, Exena, I don't know. It's a relatively new, by relatively new, still a few years old, selection of tools from Panasonic that are, that are pretty damn cool and it's pretty they're not out in other parts of the world as I said before. Because this is not just an impact driver, this is an installation driver, this is a multi-purpose tool. But look, it's an installation driver that doesn't have that stupid little bit sticking out the front like every other installation driver I think I've ever seen. The Festool, the Milwaukee, the Bosch, they all have an impact driver bit that you stick over the top of the other bit. So you always end up making the tool pretty big to use. Whereas this, bang, impact driver just like the DeWalt one. All the fittings go straight into the end of your impact driver. So how does that work tools? Well I'm glad you asked. Let's take this out and let's remove the front. That's right, we're going to remove the front. So you just ping this off, you can just leave that off, you never have to put it back on really if you don't want to. And we've exposed this aluminium toothed circle here. And all your attachments clip on there and they can stick in eight different places. What sort of attachments are you talking about? Well, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We have a right angle chuck, possibly the best right angle size chuck that you can get. Um, I haven't measured all the other ones and I haven't even measured this one yet but we'll do that later in the video hopefully. Um, but I looked recently at the Hikoki installation driver. That's right, Hikoki do make an installation driver. Only available in Japan too as far as I'm aware but haven't really researched that one. So it's got this bit here and then you click on the attachment for the impact driver. So it makes the thing about this big, which you know, starts defeating the purpose. You might as well use a DeWalt. Um, whereas this, look at that. I mean that's it. That is it, straight in there. It's got a proper chuck on it. And here's the beautiful bit, bang, clicks on, any angle you want, well not any angle, one of eight angles. I wish I had this when I was building my shed because it would have come in such handy. We've got a little mark on the top here and marks on the actual attachment so you can see where they line up. And yeah, you can put it on one of those eight angles. Eight angles? It actually looks like more than eight. Let me just check that. So. There is our first angle, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It is indeed eight. So this right angle driver bit, which if you want to know is the EZ9 HX501. I'll put some links to all this stuff down there, but you are probably going to have to get it from Japan. I got mine from Amazon in Japan and I will put the link to it down in the description. So as well as this coming with the tool, it also came with this. Now what is that? That kind of just looks like the same thing. What's going on there? Well basically it's offset. So this, when you clip it on, means now I'm driving right up here, flush almost with the top of the tool. So this is great for cabinet makers and stuff because you can get right up into the top of corners, in the corner of cupboards and stuff, without your tool rubbing, without damaging what you're working on and without damaging your tool. Because I know we've all done it, right? You're trying to get into a corner and you've got got your angle driver with the longest bit you possibly can to try and get it to work right and you're sort of tweaking it as you turn it up and you're trying to get it in there well this eliminates the need for doing all that bullshit and yeah once again can go on any one of eight different angles if you want if you've got some weird one if you want to get in sideways like that so pretty cool now those are fairly standard sort of installation driver style attachments but this thing also has some really cool other attachments. Now unfortunately I don't have them because they didn't come with this particular kit and I'll show you what's in the kit in a moment. They're also pretty damn pricey, one of them is actually more expensive than this kit was. <laughs> but this has a crimper attachment believe it or not. I will put it up on screen right about here. <laughs> 
but not only does it have a crimper attachment it also has other wire related tools wire related tools yeah you can get a wire cutter for this so you can get a cable cutter that will cut up to three quarters of an inch 19 mil I think that was the one that cost more than this whole kit <laughs> so yeah I didn't really want to try it until I'd had a good look at this thing maybe we'll look at that at a future date if you guys are interested but that clips on the front and I'll show you a shot of it on the screen again here and you can use that as I say cut up to 19 millimeter diameter stuff so this is a really multi-purpose tool that's both small powerful compact it's got a bit of everything is it powerful though well that is the question 155 newton meters this is rated with an 18 volt battery I forget the number for the 14 volt battery I'll try and tell you by the end of the video it's a little distracting here because you know it's like how am I meant to get any work done when there's all this orange juice around and all this beautiful weather and fantastic scenery oh the things I do for you guys things I give up and now I've got to try and get my camera to focus again when all it wants to do now is focus on the scenery in the background as well. See, it's not just me. The world is telling me I need to just focus on the scenery. Here we go. Back in action. Let's take a look now at what this did all come with in total, what I purchased from Japan. And like I say, I'll put a link to it down there if you are interested. Just remember, 110 volt charger comes with it. Now, you may be able to buy a charger where you live to run on the voltage you are. If you live in Japan or America, not a problem of course, because you guys are 110. If you're 220 to 240, like we are here in New Zealand or Australia, UK, then you might have to buy a local charger. You can get a local charger in New Zealand, I've seen from the Panasonic website for about 85 bucks. Anyway, I'll go grab the rest of the gear. So this kit comes in a nice black case with Panasonic written in silver on the front, although it did get a bit scratched up on the drive here, unfortunately. Now, before we open it properly, let's have a look at this other feature. So you've got your standard opening clips on the side here, but if you're a Makita user for, you know, the last five to ten years, you will have noticed, or maybe you didn't notice because a lot of people do miss, that a lot of the cases have an extra secret sort of lid on the top. Well, this Panasonic has one too, it's just, it's not quite as secret and it's a lot easier to get into. The Makita ones are a pain to get into. This one has a little lever here, unlocks this, and the top opens up. You now have an area in the top there to put driver bits and drill bits and screws and all that sort of stuff that you would use while you're doing your job. Another look at the view. Oh, hang on, back to work. It's a hard life. Don't get distracted, Mr. Tools. So that all shuts up again pretty easy, like so. Now let's open up the main toolbox. And inside we have some things that we don't need. <laughs> Wedge it up on a tools and stuff sign. First of all, if you want to keep the um, little protective cover on the front of your impact driver, because you're only using it as an impact driver, they supply you with a couple of little screws to hold that in place so that it doesn't come off. Then of course we have a manual which is all in some sort of foreign language, so that is not a lot of use to me. That landed on the table beautifully, can't believe that. <laughs> we have the charger which is quite a nice charger, although it's pretty 80s looking in it. I mean, that is a, there's no expense spared on extravagant trying to make it look good or anything. You know, it's just a box that you charge batteries on. It's pretty basic. Done. It's got that, those two arrows there to line it up just like you do with the tool because they don't slide in from the end. Now, I've charged these batteries up and the battery charge is a little bit annoying because it's, it's backwards, in my opinion, it's back to front. It starts off with a solid green light when the batteries are charging, then goes to a slowly flashing light when the battery's like 80% charged or something. And then when it's fully charged, it flashes really quick. It's kind of the opposite of everything else. It's the opposite of the Makita one. Uh, so yeah, and then you've got orange ones, of course, for when you've got issues. My biggest issue, of course, is this thing on the end. So I have to use a transformer to charge at the moment. But like I say, 85 bucks for a charger. Came with two 5 amp hour high output batteries. LJ, of course, stands for high output. Why wouldn't it? Um, you've got covers for the batteries as well, for the contacts. And of course, the tool itself and the two attachments. And so that's the kit I bought, and that's the kit that I will link down below. I'll link the bare tool as well in the different colors if I can find them all down there. So that's what it is. That's the kit. But is it any good? 
How good is it actually driving things? Is it good with one of these on it? Does it lose any power? Etc. Etc. You know what? I'm at the beach and I've got a lot of orange juice to get through. So, wait on. So that might have to wait for another day. You guys won't have to wait though, of course, because let's jump back to the Tools and Stuff studio because I don't think the people around here are gonna appreciate me using an impact driver, especially just for the sake of it because it's so quiet around here. The only sound is the waves. And so I think I might just enjoy a few orange juices and look at the view. And I'll see you back in the usual vicinity in just a moment. How about a scenery interlude? Is 155 Newton meters with this Panasonic enough to drive? A Simpson Strong Tie Strong Drive SDWS Timber Screw. What do you reckon? Let's give it a whirl. Only just got it flush. Will it be able to handle a 10 inch? I'm thinking it's not going to have the guts to do it. Let's give it a whirl. that problem at the end there struggles to drive the head flush So I just tried this side here with the Panasonic and it couldn't get them flush whereas this thing just wants to keep driving them in. This more powerful at the moment than this. For comparison this is the new Makita TD173D and so we'll do the same thing. 5 inch then 10 inch. Let's go. Goes in a bit quicker and with less struggle. So on the tool here we have a slow, medium and fast modes for your impacting. And there's also a green light that that jumps to if you push the button again up here next to some hieroglyphics. Um, what happens if it's on that setting? As you can see, started fast and then slowed down so that you didn't cam out your screw or strip your metal or drive your tiny little screw too deep. But as you can see with a screw like this, it doesn't work. Not designed for that. Now I've just pushed this button and it made that light flash once, the green one. Let's see if it makes any difference. Is it on a different setting? Same thing. Pushed it again. Not gonna happen. It's hard getting those tight and flush. They just don't want to go that last little bit. Seems to struggle a bit more with that right angle. It didn't go in flush, so let's see if we can finish it off with a cheap Makita. There we go. 
we go. The 14.4 volt 134 does it again. that Makita again. Makita for the win. Right into a bloody knot, that'd be right. Tell you what though, that's a pretty hot impact rod. Now not only does this right angle attachment allow you to get into tight spaces, but it also allows you to get into awkward spaces like on top of something when you haven't got a ladder high enough, where normally you would have to drill or impact down from above, but you can't get up that high. Well, you can do it with this. Now ordinarily I would have had to have Got something to stand on so I can get above it so that I can push down on it from above. But without attachment, she's all good. Now I promised to show you that the Panasonic is in fact shorter than the DeWalt. Now any DeWalt user who has one of these will claim this is the shortest impact driver in the world. Well, is it? Let's take a wee look here. 100.6 millimeters. Now, if we take that, put that on this, you'll see a gap at the back. Look at that, there's a gap here of a couple of millimeters. Let's close her up. 98.3. So, we're looking at two and a bit, two and a third millimeters shorter than the DeWalt. So Panasonic is shorter than the DeWalt, the shortest impact driver in the world. Although when we come to this end down here, if I just tilt the camera down, you will see that the DeWalt clearly wins on the ass end department of this thing. The DeWalt being much smaller footprint when you're using one of these power stake batteries than the Panasonic, which is very chunky in the base. Look at it, look how narrow this is, look how massive this is. I mean, this battery's massive, and this hangs out even further <laughs> than the battery. That is one thing I'm not loving about this tool. I love the tool, I love the top, I love the attachments, not loving the base. Now, one of the other tool companies, which is currently visible in the background of this shot, is also planning to bring out a very short impact driver. For so many years it was let's see who can make the most powerful impact driver but now that we've got enough power in basically every impact driver around every company can make powerful impact drivers now they seem to be looking at other things such as weight and size and this one has nailed it pretty well on both of those fronts. We've got a nice small light battery, a small compact tool and Panasonic have done that on the top half, but they haven't managed to pull it off down the bottom. And one of these other companies in the background here is looking at bringing out an impact driver that is 97 millimeters. So another millimeter shorter than the Panasonic and with batteries that are here, yeah, not quite as bulky as the Panasonic. So I'm looking forward to that. So I finally got around to translating the manual on my phone. Good old Google, eh? And on top speed, you're looking at 4,100 impacts a minute, second speed, 3,100 a minute, lowest speed, 2,100 a minute. And that green light, as I suspected, is a tech mode, which also runs at roughly 2,100 impacts per minute. 
Now I'm getting bored with the rain here back in Auckland, so I think I'm going to head back to the beach. Now did you notice earlier that the battery charger actually did 10.8 volts to 28.8 volts? Yeah, pretty cool. Well, if you've got all of those different battery voltages, I guess it's cool to be able to use the one charger. If you've only got 18 volt ones, well, don't make much difference. Did you notice anything else? It of course has a light at the moment. It is turned off. No light. If we press the button down here, we can turn the light on so that it stays on for extended periods of time, or we can push it again and it'll only run while the tool is running. Three different options there. Now, it's got a bunch of other hieroglyphics down here, which I haven't worked out yet. It's got a battery gauge because unfortunately there is no battery gauge on the tool, no fuel gauge. You don't know how much that battery is charged unless it's on the tool. Pull the trigger like so many other tools like Milwaukee and some of the Makita ones and it will bring up the fuel gauge here on the tool but we've also got different settings for the tool here so slow not so slow and quite a bit quicker now even though it is only available for purchase in Japan and Panasonic is a Japanese brand the tool itself is made in China but the batteries are made in Japan so there you go, what do you reckon? That is the EZ1 PD1 or the EZ1 PD1 from Panasonic. If you're interested in one of those, take a look down there, as I've said before, and maybe up in the top corner there'll be some links and stuff. And don't forget Patreon and subscribing and liking and blah de blah de blah. And hopefully I'll be able to film some more reviews from beaches, you know. It's a lot nicer than doing it at home. So Cheers guys, have a good one, and I'll see you on the next one soon. Oh shit.